<laughs> oh god hey everyone anthony fantano here internet's busiest music nerd and it's time for another edition of our weekly track roundup where i go over what i felt were the best songs and the not so best songs of the week now if if you recall <clears throat> this week has been a bit of a holiday week because of july 4th so this week's weekly track roundup will be a little short not not a ton of tracks to go over this week that i was catching i do however want to mention once more that i do have some live dates coming up in august link to tickets down below down below down below i'm going to be heading over uh, to a few east coast spots i'm going to be in uh, brooklyn at rough trade i'm going to be at uh, uh, cambridge massachusetts at the sinclair and hamden ct at the space ballroom so um yeah catch you guys there we have fun it's music it's memes it's silliness it's uh some some uh you know music talking point stuff as well we do a live let's argue cal Chesta is going to be there as well so it's going to be a good time it's going to be a good time all right all right all right also down there uh, in the description box are our Amazon and Turntable Lab associate links. If you hit those links up, especially that Turntable Lab one, grab a colorful pressing of a record we have reviewed on the channel and uh, we get kicked back from it. Treat yourself, treat the channel, treat the segment, and that's all you got to know. A couple more shout outs. I do want to shout out this awesome, awesome, awesome uh, compilation that is linked down below called Riffs for Reproductive Justice. Are you, uh, uh, how, how do I want to say this? Um, uh, are, okay, so are you uh, girls and gals and non-binary pals uh, uh, concerned with the current rash of very uh, restrictive uh, abortion bills and laws being instilled in, in various states across the country. Well, this compilation over here, uh, money from it, from what I understand, will be going toward uh, the fight for reproductive rights. And it is a very heavy, badass, abrasive, aggressive, in-your-face compilation with uh, just a lot of very, um, uh, you know, just heavy-ass bands on it. So, you know, if you're heavy into riffs, if you love hardcore, if you love metal, if you just love anything loud, uh, get into this comp. Get into this comp, and obviously the uh, the the proceeds go to a good cause. So, and also want to give a shout out to friend of the show, friend of the show, Mr. Mark Rebier, uh, aka Loop Daddy, the Loop Master, the Loop Man. Uh, you've you've seen me interview him. You've seen me uh, collaborate musically with Mark as well. Uh, played played the bass with the guy. Dude's a very fun, solid dude. He has a new Loop Daddy EP out. Uh, featuring some songs that uh, you know he has improvised and and made, sort of touched up a little bit, and um, I guess are groomed up a bit for an official EP release. We are going to link you guys to that down below, so you can uh, give that a listen, stream that if you like. So yeah, once more, shout out to friend of the show, Mark Rebier. He supports us. He supports the Needle Drop. He's a great guy. You guys should go support him as well because he's a great entertainer. Mark Rebier is a fine, a fine entertainer. Okay, he's a fine entertainer. Excuse me, excuse me. All right, worst tracks. Worst tracks. Uh, just a couple of worst tracks this week. Really just a couple of tracks in, in each category this week because not, not too many songs to cover, but a couple of worst tracks. Uh, one, Ed Sheeran <laughs> blow with Chris Stapleton and Bruno Mars. Oh my God, this is like the corniest rock song I've heard in a long time. And it's not surprising because it's come from Ed Sheeran, but God, why is... Chris Stapleton and Bruno Mars on here. If you really wanted to do like a true blue rock song, two of the last guys you would bring onto a track that's like rock and roll, baby, uh, from the uh, just from the tone of the guitar riffs on this thing. Again, two of the last guys you'd invite are like one of the kings of pop and uh, uh, almost like the king of a mini revival of New Jack Swing here, Bruno Mars, and, and country artist Chris Stapleton, two guys who I have immense respect for. I mean, I liked uh, uh, some of Chris's music recently, reviewed it positively. I liked Bruno Mars's last record. So, hey, I, I, I like these guys quite a bit. Uh, but this song, Blow, blows. Uh, the <laughs> production's absolutely boring. And... Um, yeah, the, the tune sucks, and uh, I just feel like Ed Sheeran <sighs> doesn't write good rock songs, so I guess we'll just leave it there. Uh, Blink-182, 
uh, has a new single out, a new track, Happy Days. It's uh, tired. It um, th- there's there's really no gas left in the Blink-182 tank. I just don't think there's really anything else to say at this point. There is no gas left in the tank. It sounds stale. Sounds like you guys aren't as into doing what you're doing as you used to be. Uh, and this coming from somebody who back in the day loved uh, Enema of the State, you know, uh, uh, loved that early Blink sound. But this is um, pop punk having a hard time adjusting is, is what it sounds like to me. And uh, finally, The Bird and the Bee. They have a new record on the way where I guess they do a track for track tribute of various songs from the Van Halen catalog. Uh, this one they have seen fit to release is their own rendition, which includes a bit of a, a gender role flip here of the song Hot for Teacher. And uh, I've, which I've always thought was kind of a scummy, douchey song to begin with. Uh, even with the role reversal, it's still kind of scummy and douchey. And uh, I absolutely hate instrumentally how they <laughs> sort of flipped it. Uh, not only do they try to stay compositionally as true as possible to the original, but they do it with all of this like cutesy, somewhat indie inspired instrumentation. And it just does not work. So I'm, I'm really just disgusted. Uh, and, and we'll we'll leave it there. All right, let's move on to the tracks that I was kind of met on. This week I was kind of met on them. Um, they're not terrible. They're not bad. They're not awful. I wouldn't throw them in the garbage or anything. Uh, but they're still worth mentioning, and I thought that you guys might dig them a little bit more than me. Uh, first off, oh, country artist Tyler Childers, all yorn. Uh, this track has actually been out for a little while now, but it is a very heartfelt and, uh, and lovely little ballad of love and devotion. Uh, It's very cute. It's very heartwarming. It's quite nice. He has also put out another single from his forthcoming album that I thought was very bland, very boring. Didn't really dig it at all, frankly. But uh, just given the quality of this song and, you know, I'm not saying he's reinventing the wheel, the country wheel or anything like that. But uh, he does seem to be a very good songwriter. He's got some good pipes vocally. And um, I don't know. I'm I'm definitely curious to hear what he's he's going to be offering on this new album of his. So I just thought I'd make you guys aware, you know, country artist who's who's most likely worth your time, Tyler Childers. Uh, moving on from there, uh, Ty Siegel has a new track out titled Radio. And uh, yeah, new record on the way. I think the instrumental on this one is fiery. It's bold. It's a little zany. It's very colorful. Uh, however, what kept me from loving this track is that I thought this was easily one of Ty's most unlikable vocal performances in quite a while. And uh, yeah, I I just think vocally his performance is very weak on this one. Not much else to say other than that. Just the the vocals could have used, I think, a better take. Rosalia has a brand new track out titled Millionara. It's off of her new double single here titled Effing Money Man. It's the uh, A side. It's the more prominent of these two tracks. So I'm going to focus on that track. And it's a pretty short and punchy single that's uh, very materialistic. It sort of seems like a lot of what has made Rosalia special up until this point uh, is being sold up the river a little bit on this track. There are some things about the song that I think are really cool. I think the beat is kind of colorful. I think the uh, uh, attitude of it is a little tongue-in-cheek, frankly, but uh, still, I guess... I guess hearing Rosalia put up a track that is this one dimensional in terms of its theme, in terms of its sentiment, in terms of uh, exactly what it's trying to express is a little disappointing. Plus the numerous refrains of fucking money, man, just gets kind of stale by the end of the track, frankly. Uh, Moving on from there. Oh, also we have this new song over here with uh, production. From none other than Kenny Beats, uh, we have Dominic Fike here, who also has gotten a bit of a um, visibility bump due to uh, his ties with Brockhampton recently. Uh, I tried his latest project a while ago, and I wasn't all that into it. Uh, It felt kind of lo-fi and it felt a little artsy, but the vocals and the songwriting didn't really stand out to me all that much. Um, although I was hoping once he gets into a place where he's writing stuff that has higher production value, uh, the tunes and just the overall enjoyability of his work will get better. Uh, I thought this might be the first taste of this here because, hey, he's working with Kenny Beats, pretty high profile guy at this point. Uh, he's not going to put out anything that sounds terrible. So, uh, he comes out with the song with Dominic 
and I don't know, feels like a bit of a throwback 2000s summer jam in a way. It's okay. You know, uh, the vocals to me still felt kind of generic. The songwriting to me didn't feel all that uh, uh, refreshing or um, uh, interesting. Just kind of felt like a very happy-go-lucky, summery, feel-good, a bit of an earworm type of track, you know? Uh, not much else, though. I'm not sure if this is a track that I'm going to be wanting to listen to once we're in fall or really once we're in August, honestly. So, yeah, it was okay. It was sweet to the ear, but uh, didn't really leave a strong impression. Uh, moving on from there, we also have Cupcake with Aisha, a new dance hall single from, a single from her, which, uh, yeah, just features a pretty straightforward, modernized dance hall beat. Um, you know, Cupcake's usual uh, <laughs> very lewd and rude writing style, lots of personality, lots of attitude, uh, continues to be, uh, well, you know, pretty entertaining, pretty entertaining voice in the hip-hop landscape right now. And let's move on to the tracks that uh, really ended up wowing me, sticking with me, uh, left a um, very positive impression on me first off. Oh, shout out to uh, uh, Tommy Phoenix, Tommy Phoenix, uh, Bianca, uh, who is a, um, uh, a creator of, of multiple different uh, uh, mediums. I have met her before at VidCon because she's she's been a YouTube creator for a while. And, uh, and I guess, you know, now she's focusing more on making music, uh, you know, under a different name and everything. And um, this is actually a pretty awesome blend of pop and art pop and R&B. Uh, the instrumental in the background with uh, all of its, I don't know, very fast moving arpeggios and kind of swirling keyboard notes is pretty stunning. Uh, vocally, I think she does very well on the track. Uh, wish the song had a bit of a stronger beat and groove to it and everything, but uh, as is, it's gorgeous, it's stunning, it's beautiful, it's inspiring. Uh, like it quite a bit. Like it quite a bit. So, Bianca, check this single out. It's sweet to the ear. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. So check it out. All right, moving on from there. Uh, gave this track over here, this new Post Malone cut featuring Young Thug, uh, a full review over on the Fantano channel. Check it out over there if you haven't. Uh, dug this one quite a bit. I think this is easily one of Post Malone's slickest songs yet. Slickest in terms of production, slickest in terms of writing. Uh, the Young Thug feature does go like a, a little hard, like a little over the top, uh, but it's a really sweet tune. It's a great tune, and uh, Post continues to inhabit and do incredibly well within this lane where he is like literally blending elements of trap with singer-songwriter music, and it just works so well. So digging it, liking it quite a bit. Moving on from there, we have new Kanye West, Brothers, brand new track featuring Charlie Wilson. I did a review of this song in full over at the Fantano channel. You can find it over there as well if you want to hear more of my thoughts on this. But generally, this track is a very nice quality throwback to the early days of Kanye's discography. Feels like late registration era, college dropout era, very soulful, lots of references to friends and family and, um, you know, just basically trying to uh, uh, live a more positive existence in the lyrics even the flow feels like a bit of a throwback to Kanye's earlier days uh, but yeah it's pretty good liked it quite a bit moving on from there uh, we have Brooke Candy teaming up with Malibu Mitch and Charlie XCX for one of the sexiest and most understated singles pop hip-hop blends uh, that you're gonna hear this year it's nasty it's unapologetic and uh, it's it's very um it's, it's very graphic and very sexual. So, you know, if, if that's the kind of thing that turns you off or that you like to steer clear from in your music, stay away. Stay away. <laughs> uh, also, a Black Metal Trio, uh, at least I think they're still a trio, uh, that I have just learned about by the name uh, Asagarim. And uh, Ab Abominations Alter is the name of this cut. Just feels like some modernized, punchy, hellish, uh, performed aggressively old school black metal uh, with some pretty rich and and searing, somewhat memorable lead melodies and in, in the you know guitar riffs too. So a good performance, good production on this one, and uh, yeah, just a solid black metal tune. So stream it down below along with all of the other tracks I've talked about in this video. And uh, that is going to be it for the weekly track roundup, everybody. That is going to be it for the weekly track roundup. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, once more, shout out to the live dates that I have coming up in August. Hope to see you guys there. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Anthony Fantano, The Roundup, forever.